Hello, my name is Neil and today we are starting on a new journey to actually uh, make a Java application for seed finding. It's also applicable to a lot of stuff, so if you never touch Java, then I actually recommend you to go on free tutorial, which are plentiful. So if you look for a Java tutorial online, you will find a lot of uh, resources. Uh, you will find from W3 School and you will find the uh, so talk from Oracle and you can find even videos and so on so I mean it's not art but um, learning Java the right way is actually a, a good way to start because if you start just because you want to to mod something in, in Minecraft yeah it's not a good path usually we recommend to learn Java from the ground up first anyway uh, today we are talking about configuration first and yeah this will not be a Java tutorial per se, there will be some int, but it will mostly be uh, about how to actually set up your dev environment. So I recommend to use IntelliJ, but uh, for those that don't use it, I will put a time code and you can jump at it to actually see how to do it from common line. Anyway, uh, so first you, I use IntelliJ because uh, it supports a lot of stuff and can provide you with a lot of utilities. Um, it's a free. It has a community edition, so right now I'm using the professional, but it doesn't really matter because the community has most of the feature I'm showing, and yeah, it's the same way. So you can download it on Intelli on JetBrain website. So if you if you put IntelliJ, you can find it, but if you put JetBrain, then you can find it maybe faster. Uh, so if you go on their website, you will see that there is a, actually a download button, and then there is a community version, which is free. An open source so you can actually modify it and so on so yeah just download it install it and that's it so right now i'm using uh, the latest version uh doesn't really matter which version you are using just using the latest for convenience but anyway so what you want first to do is create a new project so you click on create new project uh, it could be not here it could be here or if you started from a project you'd be in the file new project anyway you can figure that one out i think it's not really hard then you click on the third one so not java you click on cradle it's important because we will import a lot of dependencies so we will recommend cradle for that so you select Java as a library from Mox. Then you click here and you select a GDK, so a SDK, my bad. So if you don't have any, you should download one. So download. Then you can select any after 1.8. It's important because our library are targeted for 1.8. So anything above is okay. Anything below is not okay. Okay. Anyway, should not be in 1.7 or 1.6. You should not have that on your computer because it's deprecated. Anyway, um, yeah, currently I'm using 11 because it's a long-term support. But yeah, you could use a 16 or 8. I mean, doesn't really matter. Anyway, you select Java, so you let it select, and then you click Next. You create a, a name, so I will call it uh, Example Seed Finding because why not? Uh, you put a location and you can also change the group ID, so that's part of a, the Gradle configuration. You can change the artifact ID, the version, and so on. Yeah, for now, just let it as so, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, clicks on finish and then it should open Windows and it should start a process. So, this process is a bit uh, slow and that's intended because it will actually run the Gradle daemon for the first time which will be subsequently faster afterwards. But yeah, it will load out a lot of stuff and will build your basic um, folders. So yeah, uh, if you look a bit in the folder hierarchy, you will see that the Gradle folder contain a wrapper, which is actually the runtime for the embedded Gradle uh, uh, GVM. Well, yeah. And then, yeah, you can specify the Gradle version here and yeah uh, if you want to commit stuff on on github or any vcs uh, usually you want to exclude dot id and dot cradle because those are configuration file uh, well dot cradle is actually build file but anyway you don't want them to be uploaded dot id maybe if you want like uh, specific stuff but uh, I, pro I think uh, editor config or something like that is a bit better because it's more yeah tailored to to most of the ID, like VS Code or Eclipse or something like that. 
Then you have uh, the CRC, which contains the source, build.gradle, which is uh, the file which contains uh, all the dependency and all of the logic to actually build the project. Then there is Gradle uh, W, which is a shell script for Linus, uh, which allows you to actually run the Gradle runtime. So without the Gradle GVM install on your computer, because it will download it. Then there is Gradle W.bat, which is for Windows, so it does the same thing as a Linux one. Then there is setting.gradle, which is a general setting. Uh, so you can change the name, you can actually specify a lot of stuff here. Anyway, um, you don't modify it usually. Uh, then we can add some file like a Gradle property to specify like a GVM properties or stuff like that. But anyway, we will not go in that rabbit hole today. We are just focusing on how to get it set up rightfully. So, plugging ID Java. So that's the basic one which allows you to code in Java or well, to run Gradle for Java project. You can specify like the Kotlin one and so on. Yeah, anyway. Uh, you want to specify uh, another plugin which is application one because we are building an application uh, which will allow you to actually have um, the application uh, scope which allow you to actually run uh, a lot of stuff. So then you want to declare uh, below the repository, or uh, it could be anywhere, the application scope. And then you want to specify the main class name. So actually, if there is multiple syntax in Gradle, and depending on your version, it will be actually different. So um, the old version was main class name, and then it uh, was refactored to main class. And then you can uh, put equal, or you could put set, and then the name. Um, so if you are not sure, I recommend you to actually check out the documentation because that part is actually crucial. So if you go on, on Gradle, uh, you will see that um, the, in the doc, the latest version is 7.0.2. If we look at ours, it's actually 6.8. So it's not actually that one. So you want to select that one if you want to, uh, to have some stuff. Uh, you want to have some doc related to that uh, version. And then uh, you want to actually uh, go for the, how to actually uh, do the application part. So yeah, it's a bit troublesome to actually go through everything. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, so usually you want to go in building, in getting started and uh, building Java application. And yeah, you want to, that will be what we do in command line. But yeah, there is a, a bit of stuff to actually uh, do, so yeah. Uh, here we recommend the main class, but some might recommend the main class name. So anyway, we for newer version I recommend main class. Uh, Gradle will also. So yeah, for now we'll use that one. But if you are using an older version, that 6.0, I think, you might have to specify main class name. Anyway, so main class example. That's important. Well, I can put it anything, but uh, I want to put it example because I will create a class which is called example. And where will I create that class? It's actually in the folder. So here it's a hierarchy, and in the hierarchy there is a Java. So main is for the source code and test for all the test code. And in Java there is actually where you put your source code. So here you can create a class and I will call it example. Usually what you do is actually you create a package. You call it your group name then you put your id so mine will be nil and then you actually put uh, your file in it and then you actually have your hierarchy so here you don't see it because uh, it's uh, not flat it's actually grouped but if you look in your uh, directory explorer you will see that it's a hierarchy anyway for today i will keep it simple so not create anything fancy and uh, not folder not package no anything just plain uh, Java file. But anyway, if you want to build something, a uh, big application, you want to have folder and so on because it's way easier. For, it allows you to actually partition stuff uh, way more. Anyway, so in example, we want to create a main uh, a main method because for now, this, if we run this, we will see that it actually doesn't run. So if I go here in Gradle, this is actually uh, our button to actually cr um, run all the Gradle task, which we can run also in command line, but it's way easier to click on button. So you want to click, uh, so first you want to reload it. If you see this one, you want to reload it, so you can reload it here or here, because we changed the build.gradle. Then 
you see that uh, we have no new task which is application and then if you run it you will see that you get an error so main method not found and that's actually really important because we don't have anything defined as main method so you can just type main and uh, click enter well type enter and then actually tlg will fill everything for you but if you want the full method then you actually want to type all of that anyway I don't want so yeah uh, then you want actually to print something maybe so uh, usually a, a shortcut you want to use is called suit so s r o u t which will print a string to system out so print a string to the command output and then i can put uh, well hello world because yeah that's the first thing you should be able to to do and then if you run that you will see that actually it succeeded and you will see so executing task run so that's our task it compiled java first of course process the resource there is no resource yet so okay then it uh, look for the, through the class and execute them and then it print hello world so here we have our output but if you want to run it through the command line so you can go in a terminal and then you can put dot slash cradle w and that will actually run the uh, cradle w dot bat for windows and cradle w for for linux so yeah it's a bit easier and then you can uh, put your task run and then it will do uh, the same thing oh i was forgot that uh, actually um so on PowerShell you need that, but on on standard terminal you don't need the the, the dot slash. My bad. So yeah, just Gradle W run and then yeah you get the same output. Anyway, in your ID it's way easier to click on the button. So once you select it one first, it will pop up here, and you can click on on run each time and it will run and so on. So here we have set up the basic repository. So next step is actually setting up the dependency so i will link them in the description but uh, if you want to go on a website there's actually one which is captainlutex.stranding.com and then there is the documentation and you have actually the magic line which are here so we want to copy those out so yeah that will be that one uh, you want to go in build.cradle and you want to put them somewhere here for example uh, so you see that there is actually two times the same thing so actually you can merge them so here you can merge this one with this one and you see there is two times the same thing so you can delete one remove that one uh, dependency you see that it's declare here so you can actually copy that one and put it here and that's it so if you look what we did is we added a new source for the maven so the maven is uh, kind of the repository where you actually fetch the dependency from so the basic one is maven central which is actually the biggest one and here we are adding jetpack.io which is the uh, one we use then we added uh, a, a dependency so it's run on implementation so implementation means it actually run when uh, you are running the compiled java and so on and yeah it will be linked with your with your executable so yeah it's required you could put test compilation runtime only stuff like that anyway implementation is good because it provides you uh, intelligence and a lot of stuff so here we are using the seed repository so if you actually look on github so if you go on wikitab.com then you go on captain wotex uh yeah what's going on with my ig okay so captain wotex uh, you go on user you go on its profile uh you will find a repository called seed and you will find uh that this repository actually have all the other repository listed as transitive files so it will import them inside this repository will which will in turn transfer you, them to your application it's a bit easier to actually uh, use because it's all version control and then you don't have to actually specify all of our, those inside your uh, your stuff and you see you can actually use also the compile which will be done at compilation but anyway implementation is good one so use implementation so yeah we use this one so implementation that one and we click the refresh button so this one or this one doesn't really matter and if we look a bit closer uh, you will see that it actually downloaded a few things 
uh, it's a bit fast but um, if you look in external uh, library now you will see that you actually have a, a lot of library which are listed so you have biomutil chunk random reversal feature util cg matutil mcutil nosutil you have sid which is empty but yeah you are here cdutil tyranutil and so on so there is a lot of um, library which are useful for seed funding but yeah anyway if you import anything with, with that then it will be listed in external library it's not the only way you can actually put a um, library in a folder and then put like uh, something like a, a file tree and then a list uh, as a library and so on but yeah it's always better to use a repository because it's um, like in immutable assets so immutable assets are better overall anyway so you have them imported and now you can actually start so the first thing you might want to do is for example uh, i don't know um, you want to look at a biome so there is multiple way to do it but the most famous way is actually to define what we call a biome source so biome source is a wrapper around um, any source of uh, so it could be overworld never or end and then you create you name it so name it source so if anyone has never seen java uh, java as a type then a variable name and then you assign it to something uh, which is usually calling a method so a static method or calling uh, creating an object and then calling a method on it or creating just an object and storing it in a variable yeah it's a bit confusing if you have never seen java so i recommend to check out a, a tutorial i assume that you actually have before and yeah so biome source and biome source if there is actually an utility called off which will create a, a biome source of that dimension so if you see our annotation uh, you should have a dimension should be not null uh, so the dimension there is three of them of course and never overall so for now i will create another world one then you can actually specify the version so the version there is actually all the version you want so it could be uh, for example 1.17 but you could also use lattice if you want and then you can uh, specify the word seed so one for example and then you have it if you want specific stuff like um, biome size reverse size and so on you want to actually use a proper method which is calling the object so you want to create a overworld biome source overworld biome source and then you create this object and then you select you specify everything except the dimension so lattice then the word seed again and then uh, so I'm adding L because it's actually a long type but uh, for one you don't have to but if you are typing something which is longer than 32 bit then you will get a message saying uh, that it should be integral to, lar to large so you should add the L to actually have it anyway uh, let's go back to one and then you can actually specify for example the biome size or the reverse size so for example for large biome it's 6, 4 uh for large river it's six six and so on yeah anyway that's not for today so yeah here you have a source and for example you want to uh i don't know um look at zero zero which is uh what is uh, the biome so you do source dot and then you see that there is actually a lot of utilities so there is get biome which you can specify a uh, position then there is get biome you can specify the uh, x y and z um, get biome for noise then so that's prefer noise so if you know about a bit about biome it's actually done in stack and the last uh, layer it's called the four noise layer it's actually uh, sampling um, a four by one map to a one by one map so yeah it's um, it's getting it down and uh, yeah but anyway usually uh, for most of the stuff you use get biome for noise in because it's faster and you actually uh, don't need get biome but when you are checking the final result you want to use get biome it's a bit confusing but you might get saying of it uh, later on and you can also get the dimension so that would be uh, overworld here the version so lattice will be 1.17 at this time but could be anything later on and what's it would be one here and so on and there is also locate biome and so on so yeah there's a utility so use get biome for example 
And here you can uh, select, uh, well, the zero, 0, so zero, zero, zero. Actually, the Y doesn't really matter in the overworld, but in the it does. So, yeah, in the overworld could be anything, could be 128. It will actually uh, sample at zero, so, yeah, could be anything. And, yeah, you have now uh, the biome. So, Actually, you are not catching the results, so you want to catch it. So you want to put it in variable, and that would be... So if you look at the at, uh, function, uh, you will see that actually the result of it is a biome. So you want to store it in biome, and you want to import the class. So if you look, it will import uh, the biome class, which is actually a wrapper to actually uh, list all the, all the biome. And if you want to look at uh, all the biome available, you want to go in biomes, which is a registry, and have all the biome uh, which are listed. So if you don't know which shortcut I used, I use uh, Control B to actually go uh, straight directly to the class. Uh, yeah, that's some stuff you actually pick up uh, when you start uh, using. Anyway, and then you can actually log it, uh, well, print it, so biome, and you can put it to string, or you can just get uh, the ID or name. Yeah, I will put the name. So the name actually gives you the name. If you put the string, or you put anything, uh, nothing, it will actually output this, which is um, yeah, a bit, uh, bit too much information. We just need the name. And then we can run it. And then we get it's an ocean. So if you want, you can start uh, Minecraft and check out, and uh, it should be correct. Anyway, so here we see how to use the biome, but you guess that actually that's just like uh, the tip of the iceberg. When you want to build a, a seed finding application, usually you want actually to do a specific thing. So yeah, this part, uh, I think I will put it in a, in a second one because uh, this is the configuration part and I don't want to uh, to clutter it with a lot of stuff. So right now I'm going to go to how to do it from shell, which is a bit different. And then I will catch uh, you up in the second episode, which will detail you how to actually uh, make a useful application. So I will decide what uh, the application will be. Anyway, thanks for watching. And for the one which are looking for shell, it's right now. So. You want to go in your folder, then create a new folder. Uh, let's name in, I don't know, example, this. You go in it, uh, you open uh, a PowerShell, so shift, right click in the folder, open PowerShell, uh, could be a command line, could be uh, a Linux, uh, a bash shell or anything, ZDSH uh, or something like that. Then you want to actually have a Gradle install. So if you don't have Gradle installed, you want to download it. So you go in Gradle and then you install it, uh, then you download it. And then, yeah, you download the latest version, so binary only or complete. Uh, usually what I do is actually I go on my PowerShell admin and then I do Shoko, uh, Shoko install and then just install Cradle because I'm just lazy. So uh, Choco is my manager, could be Scoop. There's actually a lot of manager for Windows. So it's the same as uh, in Linus uh, APT or Yum or Pac-Man or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, or DNF. Uh, so here I have Gradle uh, version 6.8, which is install, uh, which is great. It's not the newest, but it's yeah okay. Um, so what we will do is do Gradle in it. So this uh, actually is a step which are listed on uh, Gradle getting started Java. If you if you look here. Yeah, you will see that uh, for building a Java application, you make a, a folder, you go in it. So yeah, I do it with the key, but you can actually use the command line if you want. Then you type Gradle in it. So that will prompt you a lot of options. In Intergy, it was a bit faster. So here you want to select, uh, so if you look here, uh, at application usually, because yeah, you want an application. Uh, then you want to select Java. So right now, actually, it has a default Java, so you can click Enter. Then um, split functionality across multiple projects. Uh, I don't recommend this option. 
of course you could use it but uh, it's a bit uh, tedious to actually use it afterward anyway so here we click no then we select the build script so a lot of people actually switch to kotlin nowadays but groovy is the old school way so we'll stay with groovy then you select the test framework so usually i recommend uh, junit jupiter because it's the uh, latest one but you could go for junit for uh, i mean yeah it doesn't really matter project name you can change it if you want but usually you stay with the folder name source package you can change it also but yeah it's better to stay same and that's it then you actually have everything done here so then you can click and open it in your favorite uh, editor so it could be vs code IntelliJ, eclipse or something like that i'm going to use IntelliJ again uh maybe not the best option for you ah i will use a uh, vs code just to show you that actually can do everything from child uh i'm not a very fan of uh, vs code but anyway we will do everything from child we will not use any plugging or something like that anyway uh so if we go here in um in the app we'll see that actually uh it move everything into uh, a folder called app and create our build gradle here and crc in it uh that's the new thing uh, which is basically they say that uh, they need to include a folder and then in a folder they put everything this allows to actually have more configuration than just one folder i don't agree with this principle but anyway you can change it uh, if you want to you can just put that one here remove the include and move the crc up anyway we'll not change it for now and we'll keep that way so here we have the same thing so here we have actually id application which is great because now we have the application publicly and we have the main class which is specify which in IntelliJ we didn't have so yeah we also have a lot of stuff which were created so we have a default uh, app.java so that allows us to uh, get a basic structure it's not really the best one but uh, yeah we don't have any resource we have a uh, test over there, um, which is um, basic test so usually i prefer this one but anyway uh, so yeah it tests what actually it has like um, yeah the greeting so if you want to run that you want to pop up a shell so i always forgot where is my shell uh, go terminal new terminal okay so if you want to run it you can type cradle and run and then it will run directly so it will compile a lot of stuff and will print a world because yeah that's the default one of course you if you don't have this part you want to create the app then set in your build.cradle the application and then the main class and the name of your, your stuff so here there is a package example this and then there is a, the name in it and the same way we did it for um, IntelliJ we will import in our build.cradle the, the configuration for our repository and the dependency so I'll just copy that one. Of course, you can put it, up, get it from the description, and we want to put it here. So I, yeah, uh, this one. So it's using G Center here. Okay, why not? I mean, it doesn't really matter for us. Uh, this one we don't want it, and a dependency we want to remove that one. Okay. So now I have all everything set up. So if I want to actually do stuff here, I can actually, uh, for example, uh, create a, a new uh, overworld. Well, let's create it just a biom source. It's a bit easier. So biom source, um, a new biom source. Uh, it's a bit tedious when you don't have any license because you don't have everything which is nice and, and so on. But anyway. Uh, dimension dot uh, overworld then uh, mc version dot uh, latest uh, and then the version as uh, a seed and then you want to, to print uh, oh why does it register this one yeah i'm so used to actually have a id completing everything it's a bit tedious to to write everything it's a uh, yeah but anyway you can you can easily get it and then you actually need to have also import so i will not bother and create them so i'll just import them uh, that's a lazy part but hey 
And yeah, it should be set up. So if I run that, I hope I don't have any error. Uh, maybe I actually have. Um, biome source. Oh, my bad. Actually, it's not a new biome source. That's actually my bad. I always forgot. It's biome source off because it creates a factory from it, uh, which is yeah. And then we get actually the biome, so yeah, put it uh, the biome full biomes, but you can put get biome name, so yeah. And as you can see, everything was imported correctly, and we get still Austrian. Okay, so in command line, uh, it's a bit easier to actually construct it, I guess, because you just have to run Gradle in it, then actually select the right uh, thing, so you can find it on getting started by Gradle. And yeah, then you can open it in your favorite editor. Of course, I prefer IntelliJ, but that's of course completely up to you. You can type it everything. I prefer to not type everything and just uh, go my merry way by having intelligence. That's my way to do it. Your way it may be better. Anyway, we have everything set up, so yeah, we can see you in the part two, which will be building a proper application. So we'll choose the topic, of course, but uh, yeah, you can. Um, well, uh, ask me in the comment if you want a specific application or how to do it or some pointer and so on. I uh, will try my best to actually come up with something which is uh, close to what you ask. Yeah, thanks all for tuning in and I hope you to, well, I hope to see you soon again. Uh, yeah, it's always a funny way to, a funny thing to see, say that, but because I was late on stuff like that, but yeah, I tried to commit more to some of my engagement. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and see you soon.